In today's video, we're gonna talk about what to do with these strawberry runners and what also you can do to create bigger, more beautiful, luscious strawberries. Hi, I'm Jillian with Sanctuary Gardens, and there is a good chance that if you're here, you might have watched this video. I made this video about two years ago, and in it I explain what exactly I did to create big, beautiful strawberries. And the key thing that I share in that video is pruning off your strawberry runners. That video took off, and I have a lot of views on it. I get a lot of questions about it. I realized pretty quickly that I needed to make another video to really explain in depth what to do with your strawberry runners. I believe that the information in that video is still correct in most situations, but in today we're gonna be going into a little further depth. So first of all, let's talk about what exactly strawberry runners are and how they work. Strawberry runners are actually what are called stolons. What it is is the strawberry plant's effort to propagate itself, to multiply reproduction. The strawberry plant will oftentimes put out multiple of these throughout the season. And at the very end, you'll oftentimes see a, a tip where there be a bunch of leaves on the end. At each of these nodes, the strawberry plant will put out what's called adventitious roots. And that new plant, that put down roots, it is now a daughter clone of the mother plant. Now you can imagine that if you let your strawberries completely go free with all the runners that they want and they just continue to reproduce, before long you're gonna have a bunch of strawberry plants. That's a great thing, right? Not always. The issue with allowing a strawberry plant to put out runners is that a lot of energy goes into the reproduction of the plant. So if a plant is focused a lot into reproduction, it may not focus as much in fruit production. So after explaining this, now you're thinking, well, I'm just gonna take off all the runners on my plants. Hold your horses. What you need to decide is what is the goal of your strawberry bed. If your goal is to actually get more strawberry plants, then let some runners go. But if you have enough plants and you don't need to multiply at all, then your goal is to clip all those runners so you can get as many and big fruit as possible. June bearing strawberries will produce a lot more runners than ever bearing strawberries. And here's where there is a key difference. June bearing strawberries actually need to produce some runners every year for the health of the plants. So if you have June bearing strawberries, which most people do, Letting them have a lot of runners is actually okay as long as at the end of the strawberry season, you're doing a renovation process. That is beyond the scope of this video and if you want to learn more about renovating your strawberry plants, I would recommend looking up how to renovate June bearing strawberry plants. Because I don't have June bearing, I can't show you how that works. But basically, you mow down your strawberry plants, you just thin the rows out. And oftentimes this involves getting rid of the mother plants and leaving the daughter plants. When it comes to day neutral and ever bearing strawberries, there is a little bit more of a decision you have to make. If you don't have the goal to reproduce your plants and you have the right amount of plants you need and want, and all you want is large productive strawberries, then all you need to do is prune off all those runners. All you need for that is some clippers and then just find those runners and clip them off as close to the mother plant as you possibly can. I usually do this whenever I'm picking strawberries. I, as soon as I find a runner, I just clip it off right then. This makes it manageable so that they don't get out of hand and suddenly you have a bunch of plants everywhere. Now, if you decide to prune off all of your runners, I've had a lot of people ask if they can then take the runners and root them in water and then plant those in like pots or another area. I tried this with a runner about this size and it didn't work, it didn't root at all. But with runners that have leaves on them, you absolutely can put those these ends here in water and they will root and become another plant. Just make sure that you start seeing those little adventitious root nubs starting there before you put it in the water and then those should come out just fine. Now, if your goal is reproduction, let's talk about the different methods you can do to reproduce new plants. The most common thing that people do is just completely let their strawberry plants produce as many runners as they want and suddenly they get a thick mat of strawberries and then their production very steeply declines after that. My recommendation is to do some selective pruning where you allow some runners to go ahead and root and then you prune off others so that you don't have a thick mat of strawberry bed. What's really great is even if you're runner lands in a place that you don't really want to plant right there, you can later dig that little plant up and move it to a new location. If you want to learn how to do that, check out this video right here. In that video, I go through all the steps of how to do it. The best time to, to remove those little daughter plants is usually late summer. Option number two is to train the runners where you want them to root. For instance, in this part right here, in this part of the bed, I had a very tiny strawberry plant that wasn't doing that well. I was worried that it may not survive. So when I saw a runner pop out of this mother plant here and come this way, you can see that the, the runner is right here, I let it root there. 
on purpose because I knew that there was a chance that that other strawberry plant would have survived. Now this plant right here is a daughter clone of that mother plant right there. And now I have a healthy growing strawberry plant here where I may have had none. After the plant has rooted, you can leave this runner here that connects the two of them. It's kind of like an umbilical cord or you can very carefully prune it off. This was the runner that connected these two. I'm just gonna toss it. And now I have two separate plants. The two easiest methods are the one where you let the plant root itself and then you can always transplant it later or train it to a spot that you want it to go. And then the, the other option that is still easy but does take up just a tiny bit more effort is to uh, prepare a medium for your runner plant. This is my personal favorite option because this makes it so you can share your strawberry plants with others or you can just take it to a completely new location. All you need is a pot with a growing medium, one that's nice and light, and then uh, something that you can kind of hold the, kind of press down into the medium to hold the runner there. I just took a paper clip and just spread it out. Let me show you how this works. So what I always look for is a plant that already has some leaves. And right here, I can already see some little adventitious root nubs that are kind of poking out. So I know that this one is really gonna root very well. And what I do is I just place the pot right there I set the plant down where those roots are going to be coming out and then I am just going to press this right there and make sure that it is nice and tight so that that part of the runner is in contact with soil. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just clip. This is another runner beginning. I'm just going to clip that off. I don't need that. Although you could, you know, have you could have multiple of these if you wanted and then i'm going to leave this runner attached to the mother plant for now because it is still getting a lot of energy and nutrients from the mother plant because it doesn't have roots yet so until i see roots forming and this little plant is you know wiggle test proof and if i pull it it i can tell there's roots there at that point you can cut it free and then it's its own clone daughter plant the wonderful thing about strawberries is that you never have to buy strawberries again once you buy your first batch because they are so good at reproducing. We just have to be really good about guiding the strawberry plant so that they don't completely take over and suddenly put so much energy into reproduction that you don't get any berries because most people want berries. That's the reason we grow strawberries. And the bigger the fruit and the more prolific the plants are in producing fruit, the better. Here's one last thing that you need to know before I end this video. Although strawberry plants are technically perennial, they are at their healthiest from one to four years. At that point, you'll start noticing that the plant health declines as well as production declines. In year one, strawberries put more energy into establishing themselves. They will produce fruit, but not as many. In year two and three, they're their most productive and they are the healthiest. In year four, strawberries may continue to produce berries and be healthy, but you might start noticing a decline at that point. And at that point, it would be good to start thinking about replacing those mother plants with daughter plants. And you can do that by doing any of these methods that I just showed you. In your one and two, clip off all the runners. In your three and four, consider maybe letting some root so that you have some new plants so that you don't have to buy new ones when they're done. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you learned something new. If you did, hit that like button. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button because we have some awesome videos coming out all about strawberry care and just general gardening. As always, go out and grow something. God bless.